Thanks very much, Danielle, and it's a pleasure to be here and have an opportunity to talk about my pet addiction, which is called coaching. Uh, make sure this is working, which it is. Uh, I'd like to, to start by kind of asking a question, uh, which is one that I ask around the world, which is if you look at this VUCA world that we've heard about, a term given to us, an acronym given us to, to us by the US military, is that we tend to be living in a world of complexity, ambiguity, volatility, and uncertainty. And I'd like you to raise your hand if any of those terms tend to indicate a little bit of your daily life. I'd like you to put your hand up if it doesn't. There's usually somebody. <laughs> uh, the other question, which is uh, an interesting one, is who thinks it's going to settle down? Anybody? No. So we've got, a, we've got an issue here that in organizational life, we're looking at a future of ongoing and increasing complexity, ambiguity, volatility, and uncertainty. So the challenge is to shift from you know, the drowning to something a little bit different, which is the surfing. And the key word is energy that essentially we're drowning because of these waves of energy coming out of a, of a very complex system. And as a result, we're trying to fight them. And in, in traditional management style, to control. And if you think about the wave analogy and the metaphor, and, and Judith was talking earlier about the power of metaphor, is swimming against the waves eventually you're going to have the opportunity to drown, or you might even get eaten by a shark. But Another way is what can we do to grab some of that energy, get above it, and use it, and actually have some fun? Let's get back to this amygdala. We're thinking of actually forming the amygdala support group. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to attend. That, re that really what you're getting is a lot of anxiety in the system. So all of you, when you're talking about your daily life, and how that shows up for you when you turn up to the office and things are rather different than you expected the day before, that you're really getting a, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress responses in the workplace. And again, I would imagine that would be familiar to you. And uh, I want you to just imagine a little bit the, uh, the worst problem that you could possibly think of in the workplace at the moment, things that are going on for you. I just want to watch the expression on faces. This is more for my amusement than anything else. So think of something that's really bothering you at the moment. Okay, everybody got something? Anybody not got something? Okay. Now, those things are real. There's no doubt about that. Those issues are real. Yet if we allow them to overwhelm us and get into a position where we are in a, a limbic system response, Clearly, our higher order thinking is not going to be able to enable us to manage it effectively. So uh, let's try something. Have a look around. Just have a bit of a look around. Have a look uh, and a bit out the window what we can see, the people in the room. Uh, the morning tea was pretty good, wasn't it? And uh, the coffee was okay. And I think lunch is going to be good. And it's a lovely day, beautiful city, no floods, nothing happening. So I want everyone just to say things are okay as they are. Okay? Things are okay as they are. After me. Things are okay as they are. So if you could look to the person beside you and really say that with feeling. <laughs> look at that. Well, well, really they are, aren't they? So, you know, I mean, tomorrow we don't know, but at least at the moment they're okay as they are. So if you could all be wired up to those machines over there, you'd probably find that different parts of your brain were starting to turn on. And interestingly enough, they're the bits of the brain that make you think better. So not a bad idea, eh? So really what we're talking about is, this is where we get back to coaching. My job is, as an executive coach, 
to have a conversation with people that gets them into a space that things are okay as they are and that they can face the future with a degree of confidence and with the best possibility of unleashing the potential that they have as individuals and in teams and in organisations. But of course the issue is that it's difficult to hold that position. And the position of things are okay as they are is not a cop-out. That's not a, a flight response. What it is is, well, things are okay as they are, but wouldn't it be exciting if we could make them even better? and challenge people to really go a little bit further and to make the best of what they've got and to shift into a better spot. So as a coach, that's really what I'm doing. And you'll see here, coaching conversations, connection points in human systems. Now, uh, there are IT systems, there are structural things in organizations, there's buildings like this very beautiful building here. But the power of any organization is the system are the people in the organization. And the connection points in human systems are when people communicate and talk to each other. So if you've got really powerful conversations happening, where people are having those uh, kind of creative conversations that we know get to innovation and get to productivity, then you're very likely to have a very successful organization that will in, in turn create better systems like structural systems and be financially successful. So what I'm doing really as a coach is, is this. It's firing up the energy at the connection points of the system. Firing up the energy at the connection points of the system. So uh, you know, that is a really, really difficult thing to do when people are in high anxiety. Another hands up exercise. This is a very strenuous aerobic kind of presentation. But hands up if you have any issues of organizational siloing. <laughs> All right. So, you know, think about that flight response. Think about the flight response. People go for safety when they're under pressure. So what do they do? Find a friend. Where do you find your friend? In your workplace. Where do you find enemies? Outside, because they want your resources and they don't understand you. And really, we think that they hate us deeply. So this is you know, one of the leadership from George Kohlreiser there, that we, we use secure base leadership. This idea of the leader, and this is where I'm shifting into a bit of a, a move from executive coaching into the leader as a coach. And I'm talking, of when I'm an, I say I'm addicted to coaching, I'm not addicted to coaches. I'm addicted to coaching, which is a little different. It's the people that do the coaching. It's a bit like singing. I certainly wouldn't sing to you, but everybody can have a bit of a go. And, and certainly in coaching, everybody can have a bit of a go at coaching. So holding the rope as a leader, and you do that by relational activities. You know, the, also I'm a bit of a fan of self-determination theory, the relational activity that people are attracted to. Uh, the work of Martin Seligman, the happiness guru, the psychologist, talks about meaning and purpose and relationships as being the two biggest predictor of human happiness in a deep sense. So th this is really what we're doing as leaders and as coaches, building relationships and meaning and purpose. And also this idea of intention, and I'm going to come back to this in the group activity, that Intention is different from action, or, or, or what you, you, everyone has their to-do list. Intention is a deeper sense of what you, why you want to do something. It's the why of the conversation. And again, it predicts success in the longer term. Then, after the, the, the intention, it's what am I going to do? A coaching case study, I'd like to just play a brief uh, segment in a second. This is uh, Commodore Michael Houghton. Michael has been coached and is a graduate of our Executive Masters of Complex Project Management. And Michael is, uh, is going to talk here for just a, a short brief time. And, and Michael is the Director General of Future Submarines Program. He's also a submariner, and that will give us confidence because he's spending a lot of our money in buying new submarines for Australia. In working through complex issues where I'm, I'm confronted with many different um, uh, stimulus, I guess, and, and many different uh, um, ideas and uh, viewpoints being um, you know, thrown my way and, and trying to navigate uh, very complex uh, stakeholder and uh, 
technical situation, um, by being coached, I, it sort of is helping to me to understand how I am understanding the situation and making sure that I'm making sense of the situation a lot better, rather than um, just, you know, as, as I may have been um, in the past, just tried to reject some information just to simplify the problem for me. This is helping me to uh, uh, understand where that information might be coming from and and uh, and balance that and, and hold a series, I guess, what I'd say is thinking grey, where I can hold competing and conflicting thoughts about a particular um, uh, situation and work through the issues until I really need to come to a, a point of action. What I have found with... Uh... So with Michael, uh, I really love that expression, thinking in, in the grey, being in the grey. And the Chief of Navy said of him that he's someone that they bring in when the situation is, is grey. And this is increasingly the world of complexity. And coaching helps people to get that kind of clarity. I'm just going to make a couple of points quickly before we get something to uh, get you to, to do something here. But uh, just about the, the kind of the, the what of uh, or the how of coaching is what we call solution focused coaching. And these are some of the questions, if you just look at the, the list there, that we are, are typically asking. And this is, remember, as a leader, you can ask these questions too. You know, what, you know what's. What am I noticing? You know, even in this room, what are you noticing? What, what patterns am I seeing? What am I curious about? What don't I know? This position of curiosity means instead of leaders coming because coming to situations knowing everything, which is impossible in a complex situation, you come with curiosity. You know, what don't I know? So a few, few more down there. And really the base of basic thing is what's possible what's possible. It doesn't underplay the problems, but it gives attention to moving to a better, better place and, as Michael points out, influencing the system to get a better outcome. Uh, very quickly again, uh, that coaching encourages people to navigate and, and use the energy in adaptive challenges. We all have adaptive challenges in, in our lives. Robert Keegan's work in adult development talks about the need to engage with adaptive challenges in order to go to higher levels of consciousness. And his work suggests that most managers are in over their heads. They're at a level of, of consciousness that they can't deal with the complexity that they're facing. So coaching is a way of engaging people in conversations that allow them to, to navigate adaptive challenges. And this idea of being in and out of action at the same time. You talk about the helicopter view. The thing is, with complexity and with, with this higher order thinking, is to be in the action and out of it at the same time so you can see yourself in the, in the, in the moment that you are working. It's like another voice in the head. You don't want probably too many voices in the head. Just, uh, it, it's a social constructivist position. This is the An Anthony Machado, the, uh, the, the Spanish poet. Wanderer, there is no road. The road is made by walking. By walking, mo one makes the road. This is the, the, the philosophy of coaching, really. And paradoxical thinking. My favorite philosopher is actually John Dewey, the American educationalist. And his, his comment was that the ideal mental condition is the serious play of the mind upon an issue, the serious play. This idea of playfulness of getting into the, using the parts of the brain that are creative, but at the same time not underplaying the seriousness of the issues which we are facing. And there's a number there. The last one there, very briefly there, exploit and explore. This is the constant struggle of the ambidextrous organization, the need to exploit and be successful in the future while understanding that the thing that made you successful is actually not going to work for very long. So you must be exploring and getting the two parts of the organization to work together or two challenges working together. And this idea of comfort with discomfort. This is a little group uh, group handout I give, is where do you want to play in the chili scale, the Scoville scale? You know, you can choose the ghost chili, uh, which might burn you, or you can play a little bit more down where the jalapenos live and be a little bit more gentle with, with the situation. But encouraging people to move up the scale, to, to take a bit of heat in the conversation without that nasty amygdala throwing us into situations that we, we don't want to, to deal with. 
So that's a, 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 a good one here for the next activity. And, and looking, uh, actually I'll just take this forward, come back to this a little bit after the exercise. Uh, I want you to uh, have a, a little bit of a, a movement here to walk, walk around. This is going to be a little bit messy. We're going to uh, model organisational life actually. Uh, I'd like you to find the, the questions that are not exactly right. This, this uh, slide sets one back. But the question is, think of some insight that you've had today. That's one of the things. That this morning, think about the different presentations. Think of an insight. And also, think of something that made you uncomfortable. But one thing that's not up there, which I'd like you to be particularly mindful of, is what is your intention? What is your intention? And you can choose anything, you can choose the time frame, an intention for this, this afternoon maybe, an intention for next week, intention for next month, intention for your life. Pick the frame yourself, depending how you'd like to be. So share your intention, and a difference between an intention and to-do list, my intention is to uh, make a presence today that will help people have conversations and be better at what they do. That's my intention. My action is to stand up here in front of you and give a talk. So there's a difference between intention and action. So you need to find three new friends, people that you don't know. Okay, that's one rule. Then at least th or three friends, maximum of four. Five is too many, and if you're by yourself, that makes the conversation a bit quiet. So if you could find three new friends and stand up and you can find a space, do this standing up. Introduce yourselves to them. P say, give them a, a sense of who you are briefly. Explain a little bit how you are. Maybe something about yourself that you don't normally share, just for kind of fun. And uh, so get to know them a little bit and then share this idea of intention and particularly action. Intention, insight, action. What ideas come out of this morning that is going to help you shape an action that will meet your intention? All right? Insight that is related to that intention that you have somewhere. As I'm going to say, it could be very long term, it could be very short term. In the group, you need to have two very important people. One is a timer, somebody that can keep the time, that's the easy job. Hands up if you are a moderately capable tweeter. Okay, good. Well, preferably, circle, if those people could, could you, could the tweeters stand up? Would that be okay? So, preferably, and, the, and there are some people are, that can help us in the administrative uh, support staff that can help us a little bit, but preferably in your group, find someone that can tweet, because what I want you to do is, once you've shared the ideas, is to start tweeting us and put in some of these ideas up on the wall here. Okay? Now, is everybody okay? We're going to have around about 15 minutes for the exercise. So someone has to time, so you've got lots of time. Everybody has equal time. And get some tweets coming out, so we've got some insight going up the wall. Then we'll come back, and exactly 10 past, we'll come back here, and then we'll have a quick debrief of that, and then we'll have some lunch. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, what we were doing there is something you can take back to your organisational life. We found at the graduate school that the one really, really powerful leadership development uh, adjunct we've got is group coaching, working across organisational silos using group coaching, either facilitated by executive coaches or not. It, it can be facilitated internally. And it breaks up that siloing and gets people to share insights that agitate and, and energise the organisational system in ways that make really, really interesting things happen. And I was talking to Daniel there, and, and as we were listening, we could almost hear the conversations that were going on in the different parts of the room because of the intensity of listening that was going on. Just by setting up a conversation where people are talking about intention, insight and action, and really listening to each other, there are different kinds of conversations. As Judith was saying, the health of the conversations is what 
determines the health of the organisation. So thank you for your engagement there. Just to, to finish, we're moving a lot in coaching towards this idea of a coaching culture as organisations. You know, I really think, you know, there's a, a lady that's doing a PhD on coachable moments. When does a leader choose to coach? Well, we're starting to think that it's when does a leader choose not to coach is more the point, that the default operating system of leadership may well be this questioning, curiosity, people focus, relationships, meaning and purpose. So this is the possibly the way forward. We're certainly working that in the graduate school. And I won't ask you to read that. I just like the colours. Isn't that nice? But this is the uh, graduate, it's a graduate certificate in business, brackets, leadership through coaching and mentoring, which is a possible new offering. We haven't got it through the, the system, but a possible new offering. And we're, we're basically aiming to look at leadership and coaching and mentoring through six different lenses. Some of the themes today that I won't even bother, I won't even go through those now, but those themes will look through the, the lens of the individual, the lens of the group, and the lens of the organization at the same time holding the other two lenses in the mind. So it's a complexity of mind uh, exercise. So uh, we do a lot of the coaching pro programs at, at the graduate school have developed over the last few years and people have been really asking for more and more of different kinds, group coaching, individual executive coaching, leadership coaching cultures, coaching, leadership development programs supported by different kinds, all sorts of manifestations which, which we're meeting the demand for. So that uh, basically closes it. So thank you very much uh, for your attention and I'll hand back to Danielle.